Aloha mai kāko o wau o Ilani Shibata. Uh, he kumu wau uh, no ka papa a Kamali'i, ka papa na puali no ke kula o Kamakau. Uh, aloha o wau o hi Ilani Shibata. I'm hi Ilani Shibata and I've been the kumu for the preschool na puali of ke kula o Kamakau for the last five years. And we have been developing a lot of amazing offerings at our little Papa Kamali, our little preschool. Uh, one of the most exciting things is that we, we have developed a Kupu Kupu Hoike Capstone project. And today I would like to share that with you. So in our Hoike Capstone project, what we do is every quarter, there is a subject matter that builds for the whole year. So for Kauhapaha Ekahi, our first quarter, we look at the anai, Onayao, the universe above us and its relationship to you as a haumana. In Kauhapaha Elua, it's about the Honua and how the Honua is one of our picos. And Kauhapaha Ekolu is our kuleana to everything that is living, plants, animals, to kanaka, and so forth. And then Kauhapaha Eha, our fourth quarter, is we look at our place as a kanaka and how we relate to our community. Our Hoike Capstone project uh, is connected to the Hawaiian Focus Charter School vision of the graduate. And our capstone is, what is my pilina, my relationship, and kuleana, my privilege to haiku, waipau, and heia. Kekulo Kamakau is located in Haiku, uh, in Kaneohe, on the Ko'olau Poko side of Oahu. And so it relates to the vision of the graduate uh, through know a place as a pico and foundations for making larger connections. So what we do throughout the year, like I said, in our uh, breakdown of our Kauhapaha, our our quarters uh, all build up to this capstone project that they do pretty much in the third and fourth quarter. Now, this is our class for this year, 2019 to 2020, a very small class, but very, very full of energy. And so we do things uh, like work on our hakalama, right? Uh, we look at everything around us here we can say kiaka, kiaka uh, drawing kino lao o lono, yeah, parts uh, what we see as lono, right, the pua'a. And they're always creating, always using their imagination and always drawing because that's actually how literacy is, uh, is ho'ike ia, right, is uh, established or shown in this age level. And helu helu, right, reading is a big part of our curriculum. And we were really lucky this year because we actually moved into a new portable. And so the picture on your left is them in our new space uh, on our campus. And on our right is a beautiful painting of Manai Kalani, right? Manai Kalani, the fish hook of Maui, and also the uh, star constellation uh, that is in the Onayo. And also it's the middle name of our me'e, right, our hero, our me'e of our kula, Samuel M. Kamakau. <laughs> so we discover haiku, right? We're in haiku up in the uka, up in the mountains, and we're always looking, always kilo. Every morning we kilo, uh, we look at what is growing around us. Do we see any differences? What is in the sky, in the lani, all that kind of beautiful stuff. Uh, we also invite our families to come and share what they know. So here we have uh, from the Ohana Hong, uh, their grandmother, Pi'ilani, who came and showed us about making kaula, making aho, making rope from the niu, yeah, from the coconut. And you can see that our keiki love to learn from their, their families. <laughs> Now, one of the most beautiful things is we actually have a halemoa, a, <laughs> a hen house. And that's one of the kuleana that our keiki do as the papa kamali'i.
the malama, the moa, and then the moa gift us with the hua moa, right? The eggs, and they, I would uh, cook it up on Fridays and we would eat it. <laughs> uh, we also go down to Waipao. Waipao is just a little bit down from our kula, and we malama aina malela no hoia, we malama aina there. And so we also get to meet. Uh, the community members, right, of that space. So that's part of our larger community. And then our ohana uh, try and take off and work and come in and uh, go and visit with us. Here we see ohana Brett. Uh, Mehana Brett was in our class this year. Now, of course, we know when COVID uh, made all of us stay home, we transitioned very actually smoothly to online learning. And so you can see how our kiki uh, we continued what we did. Every day we would meet up and they would uh, go through the things that we learned, but we really had to rely on our parents, yeah, uh, to be the teachers. And so we were really fortunate because our ohana stepped up to the plate. And one of the most beautiful things is I am fortunate to malama some aina uh, in Ko'olau Poko, and we have Hanai Ikapua, we take care of pigs. And so you see my daughter here, her name is Leo Mele, and she's actually part of Papa Napole this year. And so she would <laughs> help me sometimes. We would have class from the Aina, and we would feature our Pua. <laughs> and one time, uh, one of her classmates, Kelly, he actually created a makana a gift for Leo Mele. So this is his drawings for her from one of our visits uh, online to the Aina with the Pua. <laughs> so you can see how we did all of these things. And this year, because we were not able to gather at the end of the year, our Ho'ike needed to be uh, virtual. And so we really relied on our ohana and our makua to kokua to help us gather all the things that they needed because for our hoike, they normally would do this in front of a large audience of their ohana, right? They would have their ha'iolelo, their speech that was about themselves, about where they live and about their parents and about something maybe that they really enjoy. They would haku ikikai puke, they would actually create a puke, a book, that would uh, show and illustrate all of the things that they, they talk about in their ha'iolelo. And then we would ho'ike, we would perform. We would perform oli, we would perform mele, and we do hula about all the different places that we visited and malama ia, uh, that, take, that we took care of uh, throughout the year. And there was one thing that we weren't able to do this year was that we would canoe, we would actually plant something and that plant was part of their makana, part of their uh, gift to their family. Usually we either plant kalo or olana or what have you, you know, whatever mea canoe uh, came to us during the year. And so as throughout the year, we would then uh, be able to get ready for the hoike. And so you can see here, I would help them uh, ho, uh, do their ha'iolelo and then ho'ike their puke, show their puke off. And so here we have Kelly E. And Kelly E is going to share with us his ha'iolelo. And you can see how we needed to rely on the makua, the parents, to record. <laughs> O kama kani na he na he o vai ma pua ko o kai kai na a ni ma o o ma ka hiki no ma kiki ma yao o ke ka a pa ki ka la ko o hana puna hele he hava i yao na wa ma mahalo. Ah, wa mai ka i kana hana ua ko o ya i ka ha i o lelo e ah wa mai ka i yeah so the o hana are they we help them we kukua. Uh, them to record and go through. We would practice with the kiki over the long distance uh, learning, but um, in the end, it was the parents who made it happen. And then this is Kelly Ispuke. So he did one page about his Inoa, his name, and then he lives in Makiki. These are his Makua, his Ohana. He has his mama, and then Makua is actually his, the Inoa of his younger brother. And then Ilima Ona Makahiki, five years old. And then Okalua 
Hele Kona Mea Pune Hele. So volcanoes is one of his interests. Um, so what I would like to show you is one of the end products that we had. This is not of Kelly. E. This is one of our other students, uh, Kavena, Kavena Ula Kane. Selina mai ela ohana kafena ula kane ko oino no kalu u mai ao e keiki a kano nao sai elima o o maka o pai pika ka u mea a ai kuna e e. So you can see that uh, each of the keiki had a video with their hot yolalo, uh, parts of their puke, and beautiful pictures from the year. And so I worked with the parents to create these videos, and this was the online version of our hoike. Again, they would have done their hot yolalo and everything, show their puke, uh, give their makana of the puke and their mea kanu, oli, mele, uh, hula, all in front of their lar our large gathering at the end of the year. So we actually didn't have a graduation. What we had was a pa'ina to ho'olaula to celebrate their accomplishments. This is Kavena Ula's uh, beautiful drawing of her ohana. And this is Kahalu'u where she lives. <laughs> now, this is something that one of the parents put together. We actually had an end of the year hanakiaka. Uh, and I would like to show you the Napuale version or part of this overall Hanakayaka for the um, Paihaha for the elementary schools. school. Uh, here is them singing.
So you can see with our Ho'ike capstone project, you can be four or five years old and be able to fulfill something that many of us, even as adults, uh, cannot do today. Uh, one of the most beautiful things about having uh, the help from Ho'olakolike and Kamehameha schools uh, is that they were able to help us put it all down on paper in the Kupu Kupu Hoiki Capstone framework and with it assessments. And so each of the Kiki uh, would be assessed. We would video everything in the face-to-face -face version and then we would assess it uh, and have an assessment. <laughs> Uh, in this online version, we can assess it by the videos. And so we, were, we are still able to do the things even if it was over long distance, over the computer. So with that, I want to say mahalo nui loa uh, for the opportunity to share uh, the beauty of our ho'ike of Papa Napole 2019 to 2020 of Kekula o Kamukau. Ahui ho malama pono. Aloha. I'm Norbert Larson, and I'm fifth grade kumu at Malama Honua Public Charter School on the island of Oahu in Waimanalo. And you can see in the beautiful picture on your screen, a little part of our ahupua'a, makapu'u, so beautiful. Today I was asked to share with you a little bit about our capstone project at Malama Honua. And our capstone project in fifth grade is a portfolio defense. So I'm going to be sharing with you about that and especially talk about what happened when we had lockdown in March and have to do everything virtually. Our guiding question today, how did we support and empower students to successfully present a portfolio defense virtually? So the topics I'll be um, focusing on today, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of context for our school. I'm also going to talk about our Mind of the Navigator skills. And I'm going to, of course, share examples of our portfolio defense products and talk a little bit about some of the ways that we transition to an all virtual capstone project presentation. So Malama Honua Public Charter School is a small community, Hawaiian-focused public charter school in Waimanalo. Um, and it was founded in 2014 at the same time as the Hokulea and Hikianalia in 2014 were making their Malamahunua worldwide voyage. Um, so we are dedicated to developing the mindset of the navigator. Everything starts with our mission to provide an education that cultivates the caring, compassionate, and astute mind of the navigator in students and teachers alike by the appropriate application of indigenous Hawaiian values, inclusive of 21st century skills. So our school is one of 17 Hawaiian focused public or Hawaiian focused charter schools that um, are part of the culturally relevant assessment project. And the culturally relevant assessment project sort of informs everything that we do and it informs the way that we plan our curriculum at Malama Honua. To give you a little bit of an example of what vision of the graduate statements look like, what they are all about, I'm going to share with you four that um, are part of my unit plans in fifth grade. The first one is respect and honor genealogy. Another vision of the graduate uh, statement is know a place as a pico and a foundation for making, making larger connections. When we do our life science unit, this is our frame, understand reciprocal relationships and responsibilities in a cultural context. And really the defense in our third trimester is all about recognizing and accepting leadership roles to manifest cultural knowledge. Hopefully that becomes evident as I, as I move along in this presentation. So this is the Kupu Kupu framework. Um, and this document that you see on your screen is provided by the culturally relevant assessment folks. And 
you can see there's a lot to see on this and I'm sure you can't read all of it. And I'm just gonna point your attention to the three green rows. There are three cultural competencies that, are, that make up the assessment framework. Um, the first is a Kuauhau assessment. The second is a Kukupu assessment or academic work. And the third is Hoike assessment or performance assessment. I'm gonna um, talk about these three cultural competencies with this diagram though. Um, and in this diagram, you see that Kuauhau or cultural practice is really the foundation or that the, at the heart, at the core of everything that we do at Malama Honua. And you can think of it kind of like that black lava rock, the, the ground, the foundation. And that's where the, the water is and where the roots get their nutrients. And the Kuauhau includes things like our cultural practice, mo'olelo, mele, oli, our Hawaiian language values and our Malama Aina projects, all of that falls under Kuauhau, cultural artifacts. And then there's a bit of friction that's required in order to sort of to make this, this plant burst through the cracks or come out of the lava rock. And this is where we look at our kukupu, our academic assessments. Here's where you'll find our content standards and also our Mind of the Navigator um, at Malama Honua, our Mind of the Navigator skills, which I'll get to in a, in a second. And then Hoike is the performance assessment. That's the fern, that's the kupu kupu fern growing up into the sunlight and catching the rays of the sun to make energy. Hoike includes things like communication um, skills, our, our speaking, our presentation, but also leadership and community service and um, all kinds of performing arts um, and that, that sort of thing. That's our hoike. And I should say that picture on your screen at the, um, uh, of the fern in the lava rock is, is the kupu kupu fern um, growing out of Kilauea Iki Crater in um, Volcano uh, on the Big Island. For our students, for their defense, their essential question is, how do I demonstrate our school's Mind of the Navigator skills to Malama Honua? And a sub, sub question of that, just to kind of put it in a different way is, how do I contribute positively to our community and the Aina? So we do a portfolio defense as a capstone project so that students have a lot of choice and they're able to kind of curate their own portfolio that reflects their own understanding of our Mind of the Navigator skills and the ways that they are manifesting their leadership roles um, and contributing to our community. Uh, we consider the portfolio defense as an authentic form of performance assessment. And in fact, when students defend their portfolios, they do that in front of a panel of community members um, and kumu and family members as well. This diagram shows our school's Mind of the Navigator skills. And uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go around just so you, so you can kind of um, hear what they are. There's six of them. I'm going to start at the 12 o'clock position going clockwise around this diagram. Our, our Mighty the Navigator skills are ethical problem solving, communication and collaboration, global perspective, civic responsibility, confident cultural identity, and environmental awareness. Um, and you'll see in the in the photo there on the screen, this is a student that uh, presented her defense. So she was defending civic responsibility, her understanding of civic responsibility and the ways that she demonstrated civic responsibility. And um, as, the, um, as a member of our student council, uh, she had a lot to share. Uh, in that particular, that was two years ago, our defense was live in front of a live panel. And you see our po'o kumo there, um, Denise Espana, who's the principal of our school. Um, in any case, this student did an excellent job. She was the first one to share her defense and she passed. I'm gonna just focus on 
two of our Mind of the Navigator skills, these two, Confident Cultural Identity and Environmental Awareness, because this year, in 2019-2020, uh, these are the two that my students in fifth grade um, gravitated towards. These are the two that they chose to defend. So students have to put together a portfolio for their defense presentations. They um, pick one of the Mind of the Navigator skills to defend, and then they choose a cultural artifact, a piece of academic work, and a performance along with their reflection on that piece of work. So what were the stages of preparation for this uh, defense? Here on this um, diagram, you can see the first row, August, September, October, November, December, our students were engaging in lots of different projects and engaging with growth portfolios. And we use our growth portfolios as a uh, form of assessment and students use them at student-led conferences. Anyway, they're quite, uh, there's quite a lot inside their growth portfolios because they include everything. Um, all subjects are included in these growth portfolios. Come January, I asked students to curate a um, defense portfolio that supports a thesis around one of their Mind of the Navigator skills. Um, and in January and February, I expected my students to complete selecting their items and to publish their reflections. If they had not already uh, published a, a, a reflection, I asked them to go ahead and revise them. And we also worked on drafting thesis statements. Most of the students had already drafted a thesis statement by the end of February and the beginning of March. And we were beginning to um, really dig into writing workshops and to start writing their defense, outline their defense presentation and write them. And that's when lockdown happened. So what did we do during lockdown? How did we support and empower students to successfully present a portfolio defense virtually? So there's five bullet points. I'm gonna be um, discussing these in a little bit more detail. Um, but just real quick, all students had access to technology. The students had lots of choice. We used the class website and Google Classroom to organize things, a mixture of live and, and recorded lessons, and lots and lots of small group and one-to-one -one teacher student contact. That was very, very important. So here's a, a sample of the schedule. Um, this was towards the beginning of lockdown and um, I had pre-recorded some lessons uh, for a writing workshop. Students checked in on Monday mornings in um, a whole class Zoom meeting and then they could choose these workshops. I did ask them to watch a pre-recorded lesson prior to coming to the workshop um, but they could choose. You can see there's um, writing your reflections, publishing your portfolio, writing your thesis statement, and these were offered a couple of times during the week, and towards the end of the week is when I had um, some time to follow up on students if I needed to. There were also office hours and another end of the week whole class Zoom meeting. We also tried to keep up a uh, class with our COPPA practitioner. This is a page from our class website, and this page um, in particular is about writing a thesis statement. And you can see on this page, I was able to include a Google Doc, which on this Google Doc, you can see some of the instructions that I gave to students. Um, the assignment was posted in Google Classroom, and then I, sub I prepared some videos for students to watch. Um, one was from the internet and then some that I recorded on my own. Uh, these videos, I have to say, were too long. If one, thing, one thing that I learned um, is that my videos need to be like super short. So those videos are too long. Some students commented that it was most helpful when they were able to work in a small group and have that live one-to-one -one interaction with me. Eventually, I began to 
provide students with a lot more one-to-one -one, um, coaching. Um, you can see an example here. During this week, I started the week again with a whole class meeting. Um, and then I asked students to attend a small group session at the beginning of the week. And during this small group session, I prepared them for a coaching session, told them what they needed to do to be prepared for a coaching session, and, um, and then to schedule a coaching session with me. Um, you'll also notice that we included an office hour for parents during the week, and lots of office hours were also available for students to check in. And there was also opportunities for students to go to our 21st century after school program where they could get one-on-one -on -one assistant with the Kumu that are running that program. It's also worth noting that technical assistance was provided to the students. We have a tech teacher and um, she was always available for students to call. And so that was very important. You'll notice on this schedule as we moved along that the individual coaching continued, office hours continued. I did have small group sessions where we talked with students about um, a specific topic um, to help them get ready. And you'll also notice that we kept a meeting available for parents. I'm just gonna click this tech assistance link just to show you an example of the page where I provided information that was more about the videotaping of their presentation. And you'll see that there was information about how to contact our tech teacher, how to download and use Loom, one of the uh, ways that students could record their presentations. There were step-by-step -step instructions provided. I provided checklists, what was um, due for the week. And then even more specific information about um, what particular slides were required in their presentation. And an example portfolio, some, uh, a little um, sample of what pages could look like. This is just a, kind of a template that I created, which shows how I might have created a, a portfolio. So for the next portion of this presentation, I'm gonna share with you some of um, the samples or examples from students, um, ways that they uh, produced their defense portfolios. And I'm even gonna share a little bit of video from some of the students. Um, I just wanna point out that all of their portfolios did already have a digital component. All students have a Google Drive folder where they um, kept all of their artifacts during the year and items for their growth portfolio. And I think it's worth noting also that students also could um, put things in a box, just a, a, a box where they could hold things like, you know, objects. Uh, they could, of course, put pictures of these objects in a digital portfolio, but things like their ie kuku, perhaps a piece of kappa, or a gohe kapala, these items could be stored inside of their box. And these kits were all sent home during lockdown. Um, their boxes were sent home and also uh, some more of the tools that they needed to uh, continue working on their cultural artifacts. This was all sent home um, after we had the stay at home orders. So here's some examples from students. This um, is an actual page from this student's Google slide presentation. I'm just gonna move my face down here so you can see the whole statement there. My ohe kapala helps me honor the past by honoring my mo'oku aha and my amokua the shark. On this student's page, you can click on the reflection just to hear how she um, thought about this artifact. And then there's also a little video there. And I am going to actually share that video. So let's watch that. My ohe kapala is shark's teeth. 
I do French beef because my alma core is a mono. And as you can see, they're shaped like diamonds. One triangle faces up and one triangle is facing down. I did that because usually when a triangle is facing up, it means war, and one triangle is facing down, which means peace. This represents how sometimes in life you need to stand up for what is right and trust your now, and sometimes you need to be peaceful, calm, and centered. My design flows down like a river or the ocean, connecting to my Mo'okua Hau, because ge my genealogy is always adding on, and it is always constantly flowing. This connects to confident cultural identity because it honors the past by honoring my Mo'okua Hau and my Aumokua the Mano. I apply these lessons because I am expressing myself and my family through my Hawaiian culture. I can preserve and perpetuate ancestral knowledge by never forgetting who I am and what I stand for. So this student was able to continue working on her ohikapala um, after we sent home the tools. This student chose to include his iekuku, and he writes on this slide, kapa making is important because it's something our Hawaiian ancestors did, and keeping this culture alive is one of the many ways we can remember them. It disappeared once. I feel it is my duty to keep it alive so it doesn't disappear again. And I am gonna quickly show you an example of a reflection. Um, here's his reflection, what is in Gekuku? How did you make it? Why is kapa making important? Why is making traditional tools like ye kuku important? Um, yeah, so this was some of the ways that he reflected on his ye kuku. Uh, this student chose to include the kapa garden as his kuauhau or his cultural artifact. And in particular, this student talked about how growing vauke um, was necessary. In order to make kapa, you needed to grow vauke and harvest the bark. And so he talked about um, harvesting the bark and how he, how he measured the vauke's growth over time and how he made his piece of kapa. For kukupu or academic work, this student chose to include information about kapa plants. He happened to, happens to be a very good artist and uh, made these beautiful illustrations of, um, you see on this page, Pia, and you see Valke, um, and he included these in his own kapa plant guide. So I'm gonna just quickly show you his kapa plant guide so you have a sense of what his academic work piece looked like in his portfolio. So here it is. Uh, one of the projects we did during the year was to um, have students create their own kapa garden guide. Uh, one section of it was information on plants where we um, focused on research skills and paraphrasing text and so forth. Um, and in this student's example, you can see that each page of his uh, plant information section contains some categories uh, like the plant and their uses, as well as photos and illustrations. And he's even got a did you know box there related to our science investigation. And those are photos from our garden. So that's his academic work. The student chose to include her science investigation where students were investigating what different soil amendments, um, how they affected the growth of our kapa plants. So this student, um, she talked about how bokashi compost and rabbit poop affected the growth of plants. And she showed her data, she showed her map of the garden, for the key, um, and then she uh, produced this graph um, and she explained how those bars represent, each of those bars represents a different 
soil amendment. Um, and her conclusion was that the plants that we added compost to uh, grew the best. This student included a video that she um, produced to demonstrate the formation of valleys on our islands. And she writes on this page, I learned about different interactions right at home on the islands. Interactions are when two or more spheres have an effect on or with each other. For hoike uh, or performances, I did ask students to um, select oli, mele, hula, just a performance that they um, learned during the year or in one student's case, um, this student shared a Native American dance that she had learned, um, which she um, danced in its entirety. It was amazing. Uh, there's a video there of it, and then there's also her reflection. This student chose to include a chant or an oli that we would do when we were pounding the kappa. And there's a video link there to hear the presentation or to hear the oli. And this student also chose an oli that we learned, this one, ke kanu ne ao, to say when we're planting. This page is the, shows what our panel members received. So because we did things virtually this year via Zoom, um, the panel members got this sort of a landing page and they could go and they could click this link to see the student's defense portfolio. They could click to see or watch the presentation, the student's presentation. Um, the panel member had a rubric and they even had a form that was created for them to enter their scores and their feedback. Now I'm gonna just show you the ending of one more presentation from our, one of our students. She defended confident cultural identity and her thesis was, I helped to preserve my Hawaiian Samoan traditions through my cultural practice and malama aina. So let's watch your video. I'm gonna be the, my family's genealogy keeper with my, along with my sister. So then I can pass on the knowledge that our kupuna did with kapa and um, all of the traditions that they used to do and pass them on to um, my family. I want to share Kapo with others because I want other people to be more aware of our Hawaiian culture. It is important for them to know that before you make Kapo, you have to grow Kapo plants. We learned that it is a very hard task to grow and take care of Kapo plants. In conclusion, I help preserve Hawaiian and Samoan traditions when I share the knowledge of Kapo. I do that by sharing Kuku Kabe with other people and teaching them the translation. I honor my family by making designs on my ye kuku that represents our mo'oku aloha. And I also honor my kukuna by carrying on the knowledge of kapa and practicing the art. Mahalo for taking the time and watching my presentation. Mahalo to my ohana, especially my mom and dad. Kumu Larson, Kumu Lani, Kumu Sarah for helping me many, many hours. Kumu page for teaching Kappa, all the Kumus and community members in my life that have been a big part of my learning journey and all my classes. So you can get a sense from her mahalos there at the end that really did take a lot, a lot of support from lots of different people. Um, for us to be able to present these wonderful portfolios and these uh, presentations, make these presentations. Um, and it's worth noting that this student, she actually is cultivating her own kappa garden now. So that is awesome. So back to our guiding question as we wrap up, how did we support and empower students to successfully present a portfolio defense virtually? To sum it up, all students had access to technology. Students had lots of choice. We used a class website and Google Classroom to keep things organized. 
We mixed up live and recorded lessons for students. And there was lots and lots of teacher-student contact. And I want to end on this last point. Mahalo to all the Kumu and the administrators and the parents who made virtual defense possible. Um, it really does take a village. In this photograph, there are actually three parents who were hugely helpful in helping their students be successful. And lots of Kumu in this picture also provided ample extra coaching time um, to help our students be successful in their fifth grade defense. So mahalo to all of you, all of my wonderful colleagues, and to all of the parents who made our fifth grade 2020 defense a success. And mahalo to all of you for watching. Thanks so much. And um, hope you could take something away from this presentation. Aloha.